Hey, so in this video, we want to talk about zero knowledge proofs. This includes what they are and why you should care about them. The easiest place to start with this is briefly describing what a blockchain is. So blockchains are a way to make centralized things decentralized. Take a bank, for example. In a very simplified way, a bank is just an organization that looks after a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet says how much money everybody has. If you want to decentralize this, you need a way to let anybody interact with the spreadsheet. In a safe manner, we have to replace that trust that we have in the bank. And it turns out, if you define the rules, the ways in which people can interact with the spreadsheet, you can actually do this in a safe way. One way we can replace the trust that we currently have in banks is, rather than just trust somebody else to interact with the spreadsheet properly, we get them to make a proof that they've done it properly. If they interact with the spreadsheet and make a proof, and everybody checks this proof and it's fine, we all update our own spreadsheets. But if we check this proof and it fails, we just forget that they ever said anything. In this way, we can achieve this safety. Let's quickly touch on what a proof is. Basically, a proof is just uh, some way to convince somebody that something is true. Now take Where's Wally, the book, or Where's Waldo, depending on where you're from. If I wanted to prove to you that I knew where Wally was on the page, the simplest thing to do is for me to just show you on the page where he is. This is a valid proof. You would look and you would believe me and you'd believe that I knew that thing. But we want to take it one step further. I want to prove to you that I know where Wally is on this page, but at the end of this proof, you won't know where he is on the page. You'll believe me, but you won't know. And it turns out this is possible. So the example I just told you of where's Wally, we're going to do this so that you won't know where he is at the end. What we do is I have the book and I have a large bit of cardboard, far bigger than the book. This cardboard has a little hole in the middle, just enough to see a little person through it. I'm going to ask you to turn around. I will get the book, cover it with the cardboard such that you can see Wally through this little hole. And when you turn back around, you'll see Wally through the hole but you won't be able to see any of the book jutting out the side. So you'll believe that I know where he is, but you won't have any idea where on the page Wally is. And this is a zero knowledge proof. At the end, you believe me, but you still don't know the thing that I proved. I want to briefly go back over the two ways we just made proofs before. There was the first method of show me the thing and I'll believe you. And there was the second method with the cardboard. These are two different proof systems, we'll call them because each one makes a type of proof. The first one, um, show me the proof, has no zero knowledge. The other one, with the cardboard, includes zero knowledge. And if you use this proof system, you will get out a zero knowledge proof. And out of the first system, you just get out a proof. So a proof system is just a way to make a proof. At dusk, we use a proof system called Plonk. Plonk is a zero knowledge proof system. So any proof that comes out of it will contain zero knowledge. It means a statement will be proved, but nobody will know actually how to prove that statement or what it is. So in reality, in our use cases, we don't want to prove that we know where something is on a page. We want to prove that we ran some computer program correctly with certain starting information. And what Plonk allows you to do, you can prove that you ran any computer program with any input that the other person knows and they'll believe you. You get out these zero-knowledge proofs that you ran any computation correctly. If you use Bitcoin and you send a transaction, it gets added to the blockchain there. But everybody can see. They can see which account it came from, how much was sent, and where it was sent. They may not know your original account, but these can be worked out. If you use a zero-knowledge proof to achieve this, like we do at dusk, you can send something and it will be added to the blockchain, but people won't be able to see where it came from, where it went, what was sent, or how much of it was sent. It's all hidden. We also use these zero knowledge proofs as a basis for our smart contracts. You can see more about this in another video. I hope you learned some more about zero knowledge proofs. See you in the next one.